Um, next speaker is Dr. Kristen Carson. Um, Chris is one of our local students who's been studying with us part time while working as a senior medical research scientist in the respiratory department at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital um, while undertaking her Master of Science in Public Policy and Management. She holds a PhD in medicine from Adelaide University looking at advancing treatment options for tobacco cessation, prevention and related illnesses with particular reference to indigenous populations um, generally in Adelaide and Aboriginal Australians in particular. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. In the words of Albert Einstein, we can't solve our problems with the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. And essentially, this is the whole reason why I decided to study at Carnegie Mellon University, Australia. To start off, I'll tell you a bit about my background. So, when I went to high school, um, I was a fantastic student, right? Really smart to be a scientist today. I um, want you to guess from a show of hands what you think my final score was, considering I now am a senior scientist with a PhD in medicine. I'm responsible for over 70 research projects, have over 50 peer-reviewed publications in scientific journals, and I've been cited in the media over 600 times. So out of 98%, 92%, and 85%, what do you think I got? So who thinks I got 98%? Okay, it's gonna be like that, no worries. <laughs> who thinks I got 92%? And 85%? Okay, well it was actually a trick question anyway because I got 67%. I was two points shy of failing high school and what's more, I didn't do any science subjects. I did maths, I, did, um, I didn't do maths. I did art, music, PE, modern history and English. So how did I go from almost failing Year 12 and doing no science subjects to then manage to complete a PhD in medicine and now a master's in public policy and management despite never going to university prior to either of those degrees? The short version, a lot of hard work, dedication and passion. And these are all traits that I see in my fellow graduates here today. So why did I decide to study at Carnegie Mellon University? Well, as a scientist, I can prove that I can save lives. I can reduce expenditure within hospitals. I can reduce length of stay, get people out of hospital quicker and improve quality of life. What I can't do is get people to listen to me about it. <laughs> so how do I take this work and translate it even to evidence and practice and make a real world difference? So I decided to further my studies. I looked at all these different degrees and came across the one at Carnegie Mellon University Australia in a Masters of Science in Public Policy and Management. So I started to enrol and then thought, oh, can I really do this? You know, is this gonna be something I can achieve with 12 months full-time course while working still full-time as well? The next day I actually get a phone call from Professor Tim O'Loughlin. Needless to say, I met with him and I'm so glad that I did because it's because of Tim that I'm here today because I don't think I would have enrolled if it wasn't for meeting with you and talking about the amazing potential that I would have here in Carnegie Mellon University. So I want to give you a bit of indication of what the time has been like for me studying here at CMU by two of my classes, public policy. To start off with my very first class of public policy analysis with Professor Hamil Bollingata, the head of Carnegie Mellon University in Australia. Needless to say, I was intimidated and thought, no, I'm going to sit in the back and be really quiet, not on a meal's watch. As soon as I walk into the class, the whole room is transformed into a U-shape with a meal standing right in the middle. You could not hide from Emil. By the end of the class, he knew every single student's name and we had each answered at least 50 questions. But I can tell you, by the end of the courses I did with Emil, I had never learnt more in any of the lectures, subjects, anything I've ever done in my life than with Emil. Now moving on to public policy analysis two with Professor Tim O'Loughlin. With Tim, I think of him as the solver. He is Gandalf the grey or white, depending on the light. <laughs> if there is a problem, Tim can fix it. And I guarantee you that every time I went to Tim with a problem, he managed to fix it without any issue. It was, Chris, no worries, I've got this, we can handle it. But I've also never met anybody more knowledgeable in the history of politics and how to transform public policy into real world practice. And now thanks to Tim, I too share a little bit of that knowledge. So I must admit, one of my favourite lecturers was Emil. Granted, I did get all A-pluses with Emil, and Tim, I didn't get quite all A-pluses, but I won't hold that against you. 
<laughs> but because of these courses, I have already been able to make practical real-world policy changes. For example, with a Mills class, the very first assignment I ever did was to create a policy agenda memo. And believe it or not, I was able to take my assignment, structure it in a way that I gave it in person to Malcolm Turnbull, the Prime Minister of Australia. And from that, I received a letter back from Minister Turnbull and an action item moving on to the Federal Minister for Health to further this work. And then with Tim, we have co-authored a document for the Australia and New Zealand School of Government on public policy on how to improve smoking cessation within hospitals. All practical changes I've been able to make whilst a student here at Carnegie Mellon University. Throughout this degree, I now have an arsenal of knowledge, as do my fellow students, and tools at our disposal. I now have the skills not to worry if plan A doesn't work out, because we have 25 other letters in our MSPPM arsenal alphabet. And thanks to the incredible lecturers here at Carnegie Mellon University Australia, we all have the potential to be real world leaders. Thank you.